So today's guest on the podcast, we sat down with Fernando Blanco from Riverside, an artist. Met him at Mind and Mill when we used to use our co-working space. He uses acrylic on paper, does some really cool stuff. Um, and he's also created a group or community of other local artists called Solitude, raising uh, awareness for mental health through the arts, put on shows. So cool. Very cool. What would you think? I think it was great. It was so interesting. I mean, obviously, like mental health and art are like two of things that are really important to me. So I loved it. It was a fascinating conversation. Yeah. So just, you know, he's a kind of an up and coming artist, local guy, you know, still trying to figure that world out and his place in it. But he's done an amazing job in really a short period of time finding his place in the local art world and, and, and just a very genuine guy really has a heart to help other people. He's just got um, such a fresh take on life and art, and it's just super refreshing, interesting conversation. Yeah, it's always refreshing when you find someone that you would think, yeah, this person could have an ego, but then they don't. It's just such an attractive thing. So genuine guy, um, really cool art. We talked about um, the exhibit that they're still trying to figure out a date for, uh, for an art show that he's putting together um, that will be in Riverside um, over at Mind and Mill. We talk about that. Shout out to them too. If you're in, if you're local in Riverside, you're looking for a co-working space or downtown right by the Mission Inn, um, over by Prohibition. Good people, very artistic vibe. Great and, space, um, great location. It's just yeah. Yeah. So we we used them for almost a year when we first got back before we got our studio. So hope you enjoyed today's podcast with Fernando Blanco. This is the Create Podcast. Thanks for coming out, man. Yeah, no problem, man. I'm glad you guys you know invited me in. Yeah, absolutely. I, uh, gosh, we started this the last few months and as we were brainstorming and wanting to find people like, you know, local people mm-hmm. from Riverside and Lynn Empire area that are creative, that have created something. You were a handful of people came to mind and I yeah. know we met at Mind and Mill. Yeah, um, that was, it was pretty interesting. I had to see you around. I'm like, who's yeah. this dude? <laughs> who's this dude over there? <laughs> well, we exchanged this, some words. This yeah. dark lord with his black hat <laughs> and his guy. black shirt and yeah. his black laptop bag. Yeah. Well, and shout out to Mind and Mill because when I came back a year ago and I moved back and we were just getting all this stuff started and not having an office and needing a co-working space. And, and I think you found it online, right? I did. Just through Google. And, well, yeah. my friend Julie was there. Oh, and that's right. Oh. got it. But co-working space, downtown Riverside, uh, was that 9th Street? Uh, 6th. 6th Street, that's on 6th and uh, the other side of, of Mission. Mm-hmm. Um, but how long have you, I know you you work there as well, you're part yeah, of the team, yeah. yeah. Um, I've been there for like about three years, maybe coming on four now. Um, but yeah, I, I came to Riverside just like, um, just really in pursuit of art. And then I met up with Luke and I kept bugging him and bugging him and bugging him and bugging him. <laughs> And eventually he's like, yeah, you can help me out, you know, come on, we'll help them like kind of curate shows and things of that nature. Yeah. And then next thing you know, they've kind of put me on board and ball has been rolling from then. And it's been really cool, you know, like uh, just being surrounded by those individuals, like uh, really ambitious and kind of goal oriented people. And I think it's helped me a lot, you know, um, but I think that's what Riverside is, or for me at least, mm-hmm. it's a very ambitious city. And... And just I'm kind of glad I'm there now. I think it's like the really solid creative point in that town. So I'm like, it's really, really cool to see kind of things develop outside of like an artistic kind of journey. It's more like kind of business oriented and things of that nature. So Mind and Mill does a great job, I think, of kind of like bringing like creative and business together, which is a difficult, you know, a lot of times you'll have creative people Mm -hmm. and then you'll have business people that there's not really a lot of overlap. I've said that about photographers for the longest time that you'll have like super, super talented Mm -hmm. photographers that are terrible business people or, you know, decent business people, but maybe not the best photographers. Um, But Mind and Mill does a great job of kind of like, they have a lot of balance to what they do, which is cool. And I think it's like a, it's kind of weird um, that so much people lack that kind of business mentality like creatives yeah. i guess it's like they need help with that but if you can i think that's like one of the bigger arguments i kind of not argument but like uh, it's like as an as a creative you don't want to be seen as like a market marketable creative you want right. to like be seen as a struggling as artist. artist yeah <laughs> this guy's struggling every day but it's like nowadays there's so much opportunity you you could do that it's like right. There's nothing really, at least I don't frown upon it or anything. So 
Yeah, um, I, there's something to be said for being successful at something that you love. Yeah, 100%. Which is great. So with Mind and Mill, obviously co-working space, and the thing that I was attracted to working there before we had our office was just the obviously being a co-working space, but just being seem, seeming to be an outlet for just other creatives and yeah. everybody involved in it coming from a very creative perspective. Um, so what do you have any other roles there or what, what, what all yeah, are so, you doing with um, that? I'm put, I got put on, on board as a junior curator. Okay. So Luke is a, a head curator there. So event planner. So I kind of, we just put all the events there. So kind of work, uh, for mind and milk, but majority of the site is kind of for toil. I mean, now, I mean, kind of doing some like kind of video projects for mind and milk, the market. Okay. Um, but it was, majority kind of put on board for like the art gallery reports that yeah. that side of it so i mean i'm, I'm cool with it I, I just wanted to have all my hands and kind of like any kind of art expressive thing kind of just to develop yeah. my own ideas and things of that of that nature and stuff like that so i mean i've been meeting really cool people and that's a cool thing like i was i didn't even expect to like kind of meet the people that i'm meeting now after i kind of pursued myself as like an artist guy or whatever um but it's really cool man and I mean, I'm just kind of blessed to meet these people, you know. And uh, I think Riverside's a pretty cool place to start. Yeah. You know, it's, the, I mean, kind of post or before COVID, I mean, it's not done or anything, but have you guys <laughs> heard that term? People are like, oh, before COVID, like if it's over. Or something, <laughs> yeah. It's not over yet. You know? I saw the funniest meme the other day that it was like a time traveler, like mm -hmm. coming back. And they're like, what year is it? And they tell them it's 2020, and they're like, oh, 2020, the first year of quarantine. <laughs> and the person's like, what? Yeah, yeah. The first uh, year? <laughs> it's just yeah. a weird thing to think it's about. Weird. Like, uh, but it, the ball is just, was just about to roll, I think, for that city, and then kind of all stopped. But, I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm a huge optimist, so, like, I kind of I, – I think there's good in this, you know. I guess in, in my case, I was really able to kind of slow down and start to kind of develop uh, – bigger kind of aesthetic for my kind of art and stuff so that's cool. um yeah it's really cool I, and you know i'm putting together this show right now and i have a few artists on board now but that time i was able to kind of reflect on what the message is that i'm trying to you know portray or, or whatever um bring more people on board and just listen to their stories i was able to get more like in depth with each individual that's so cool. yeah kind of <laughs> i kind of sit down with them and give them like a spotlight we talk share ideas and really get to know that person as an artist and a creative and if they're really part of the message because the whole thing is i'm trying to raise awareness on like mental illness and that kind of realm through creative arts so we, yeah. we all practice creative art therapy and it's really cool man i, I mean i dig it uh, all these That's like cool. kind of kids stories that they tell me what they've gone through and how art has helped them like kind of you know, manage their anxiety, depression, and things of that stuff. So it's, it's really, yeah. really cool. Yeah. I mean, like, There's I don't such, know. like, yeah. a huge link between those two things. I graduated with a psychology degree oh, really? and then became a photographer. Uh -huh. So I'm very much, like, those two things, like, yeah. linked together. That It's so huge. Like, there's nothing, I think, like, can lift your emotional, mental state mm -hmm. like being creative. 100%. And I think that's what... And a lot of kids don't really know that, you know. Right. Um, they they see. I mean, uh, at least I I didn't know that till later. I was, you know, as a growing up, I was just like, well, yeah, this is cool, but I don't know if I can do this, you know, make it happen and right. kind of be financially stable with this. But if you really you know, pursue it, you can make it happen. And that's kind of what I was saying before that marketable kind of creative person. Right. You could totally do that, you know. Like for instance, Mind and Mo, you can hire a company like that to kind of market yourself as a creative or you know yeah but there's so much opportunity now i mean kids still still don't know and that's like the, what i'm trying to kind of show the yeah. generation to come uh, especially like with my family like i have a lot of like cousins and stuff and i'm seeing them like kind of be more curious about the arts just because i'm in that little realm yeah. and it's really cool to see like they come and they're like oh what is they call me jared because i'm a junior and they're like what is he doing he's, he's over there doing art and stuff he's like yeah yeah he's doing that and they're like what oh it's art like kind of is this art like it's really cool and i get those messages back you know from the family and kind of keeps me motivated to keep, continue great. to do it yeah it's really really cool it's well really and cool. especially we're in like this interesting place in time where 
so much of the arts have been taken out of school, which I think was a lot of the mm -hmm. entry point for kids for generations, and it's not anymore. But then I think that social media is so inherently creative mm -hmm. for kids. Like, I mean, a lot of people will hate on TikTok, but I think TikTok is amazing that's, for kids. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot that's bad about it, but it's. I think it's amazing for kids because it like flexes those creative muscles for mm -hmm. them in a way that I don't really think anything else is in a lot of their lives. That that like, oh, I, you know, I'm using this little sound clip, and everybody's been doing this, but how can I do it? Yeah, put your a own little style bit differently. Yeah. yeah, I think it's it's an interesting like time of history when it comes to oh, creating and art and how kids are. You know, I think video is like a whole new medium in the yeah. arts, which is cool. Yeah, I really I really like it. I like where it's all going, and I, I mean, I'm just excited to see what's going to come. You know, like yeah. I'm seeing all these little kids on their iPads, and I'm like, what? The, you guys know how to do this already? <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, it's just a weird. It's a weird world, but I mean. I, I got lots of hope for humanity and everything like that. So I'm like, I just want to see more. I yeah. want to see more. Like just it's exciting. push it to the limit, you know, get as creative as you can, like TikTok and all those things. Yeah. And and it's cool because you can kind of make a, a living off that now. You yeah. Know? And that's a cool part of it all. Yeah. Like your podcast and stuff, you know. And I know. I, our 10 year old since he was seven, like when you ask him what he wants mm -hmm. to be when he grows, he said a YouTuber. Really? Which, like, that wasn't a choice when I was seven. <laughs> yeah, but now there's a blueprint, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. You can totally do it. It's so interesting to me. Yeah. yeah and I love how technology has just allowed creatives and the arts. Just it's opened so many doors and so yeah. many different outlets, I think, for for kids younger and younger to discover, you know, that, that creative side of them and having that outlet. Because I know for me, I, I can look back at my life in different times where – times where I had an outlet to be mm -hmm. creative and times where I just didn't, where I was, whether I was just stuck in work or the routine of life, yeah. when I didn't have that creative outlet, I can see such a difference in my own mental health, my own just emotional state. So, Definitely. but what are, how did you get into like working with, with others and mental health and awareness, all that? How did that first start? Um, honestly, I, uh, I had set out like, when I think I was in, when I was in high school, I had this like kind of idea to create like a brand. And everybody kind of started a t-shirt brand back then, you know. I was yeah. like, okay, yeah. I was got together with my friends and like, oh, let's just start making shirts, man. And kind of that was like kind of the start of it all. And then once I started uh, to develop like a more mature kind of idea of kind of becoming an artist and what it means to become, an artist, I was like, well, we're all in the same direction. Like, I want to be able to help others and. It was really just kind of like I reached out to somebody and I was like, OK, like, yeah, I'm doing this. I have this collective. You want to be a part of it. And uh, it was a huge kind of like a shocker when people, yeah, were on board and wanted to be part of the message and things like that. And I was like, well, that's really cool. And it kind of gave me more kind of, you know, motivation to continue to do it. So um, I would say like about maybe four years ago, I really started to kind of reach out to people and see if they wanted to express themselves and it's funny because when i was writing like just writing the language out for myself to kind of read i was like it can be anything as long as you express yourself and you find you know therapy and it can be like juggling or something you know right you, anything if, if it gets you out of that idle time like because idle time is pretty dangerous i think and a lot of people kind of get lost in that void of like well, what do i do i'm bored and they kind of go do some weird stuff or you know right um, or even like idle time, I think, can be just like scrolling and that like yeah. comparison mindset yeah. of like looking at what other people are doing instead of like figuring it out yourself. 100%. And I think like uh, for me, the people that I've been surrounded with, they, they really know how to manage time and, you know, kind of stuck on me just to, I really don't like to waste time I, if it's not like uh, creative or progressive or something, you know, like I, I like I like podcasts and sitting down because you can develop ideas and exchange without like having a, oh, like a social kind of. Right. Yeah, it's kind of weird, but I, I definitely like the platform of, of like podcasts, sit down podcasts and things like yeah. that. So, yeah. I mean, how long did it take or how long were you guys doing this for? Or when did you guys come up with this idea? So it was probably three years ago. We were still in North Carolina oh. and we actually bought the equipment back then and we were going to do it then and then kept putting it on hold because. Uh -huh. We run the, the magazine is our full time thing oh, that we do, right. um, but we we grew up here in Riverside and uh, we're out there for a number of years and came back. So once we knew we were coming back, and then then we uh, we really put it on pause and 
<clears throat> knew that once we got here, we would get it started. So cool. got here about a year ago, but we needed to get the our main business, the magazine, off the ground mm-hmm. first. So as soon as we got that off the ground, then we – and actually, we weren't going to start probably till the fall, but the pandemic kind of pushed yeah. us to – it's like, well, we have some extra time and, mm-hmm. and we have people's attention a little bit more so than yeah. than we had in the past. So we weren't really quite ready, but we just were like, I know this is the time to do it. So yeah. we it's, just jumped in and Mark started. Mark only does cannonballs. I'm yeah. like this, like tiptoe <laughs> slowly into yeah. the shallow end. And Mark was like, let's just cannonball into the deep end. It's fine. I'm like, let's do it yesterday. She's yeah. like, let's do it tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Or but I'm like, let's it has do it in like six that. months. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're a good like balance. Uh, push yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. So you, you, when did you move to Riverside? Um, I think like around 2016, okay. 2015. Yeah. yeah. I was living there. It was weird because I was working at the Mission Inn. Oh, you oh were? how funny. Like, you were, like, yeah. right there. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's, just, it was, it's been a weird, like, kind of a story. Because I, I came from San Diego. Yeah. And I was going to school out there, had some jobs out there. Yeah. And I just felt it was too, like, kind of, like, lax a days ago. I was like, the it beach is. is right there, man. I don't even got to wear pants. <laughs> I wear shorts every day. Super chill. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, I need something to kind of, like, kind of light a fire behind me or something, yeah. you know? I mean, you can, you can totally get things done there. Don't get me wrong, but. I was just getting it's distracted just by the water. Vibe. Yeah. You have way different vibes. So. Riverside is cool because I think it takes like a mixture of like the super laid back San Diego mm-hmm. vibe and the like super artsy, more like fast paced driven LA vibe yeah. and kind of like has brings some balance. Yeah, definitely. And it. that was like a, a big thing is like everybody wants to move to LA right? as an artist. You want to go over there because that's where it's at. But I kind of paced myself and I said, you know, what? I want to develop myself in a city that's not too kind of, you know, yeah. washed out or not washed out. It's a bad word to use, but it, I just didn't want to jump into that pool. Right. Like, right. I guess I was, you know, yeah, di- I was tiptoeing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but sometimes you do got a cannibal and that's yeah. what, you know, you measure yeah. things based off the, you know, just jumping into things. Right. And uh, so, yeah, I came to Riverside and it was, it's been pretty good to me. You know, I can't I don't have any complaints about it. Yeah. You know, so it's really, really cool. Um, but it's a def- it, it is an ambitious city, and I, that's why I, I kind of really respect it because yeah. there's always something happening. There's, there's always, always something, something developing. It, you know, and as a, a you know, I, I'm an aspiring. I want to, you know, just kind of be in that mentality yeah. and kind of mold it into kind of uh, the realm that I'm in to be kind of a creative artist, yeah. you know. And and it still goes back, you know, I, I have like some friends and we always argue about that. They're like, well, it's because you're more marketable and stuff like that. But it's like, it's, no, it's really not, man. Like you can put yourself out there. It's just, it's maybe like, I don't know what it is. I guess if, there, if, if there's still like a, a stigma on it, like not struggling, but I've struggled, like everybody's struggled. No mm-hmm. one's seen it. Right. And that's the thing. Uh, I mean, I, I personally enjoy like the, the labor and things. Yeah. Because I, I, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to the fruits always, right? And uh, it's, it's been a re- like, uh, so I wrestled for a little while, and my wrestling coach kind of would always kind of say like, no one sees what's going on like in this wrestling room. You yeah. Kind of the idea of it's like no one sees what's work the work that's being done in the dark. Yeah. You know, and I for for a long time I've just been working in the dark, just being really low. I don't want to like, oh, this is happening, this is happening. And I, I totally enjoy it, like, because yeah. you, no one, you're kind of the underdog always, right? Yeah. And even if you're not, but it's like, yeah, I totally enjoy that, that kind of idea. I love the grind. Like, yeah, it's there's awesome. an element in being a photographer. You know, like it's it, being a photographer is interesting because there's, you know, this relatively small part of mm-hmm. what you're doing that's like with other people and public and then there's like a very big part where you're sitting in front of a computer grinding out pictures um editing and going through all those things yeah i love that part Mm -hmm. of it which i think is why i've been able to do it for 20 years because if i hated the you know grind (laughs) it wouldn't be sustainable um for me but yeah i think that artists who are able to like have longevity and Mm -hmm. flow and you know over the years you have to like love the solitary yeah. like grind 
part of it. Definitely. That's why what you're going to say. Oh, go ahead. Uh, I think that's why my collective is, is called Solitude. So it's like, oh, I like spend that. so much time yeah. alone. And honestly, it's kind of helped me like uh, spending so much time alone. Yeah. I get more in tune with myself. You learn to not be bored because, you know, uh, nowadays you can't be bored. <laughs> you can go learn an instrument, read a book or something. So uh, that's when uh, some people are like, I'm bored. I'm like, how are you bored? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Every time we hear people say that, we're like, I, I don't know what that word means. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You could do something, you know, yeah. be productive or something. Yeah. Yeah. But I Our kids say that and I'm like, oh, I have some things <laughs> yeah, for some you. Things Let me tell you. But I think like what you guys are talking about, it's so much a part of the creative process. You know, I think mm -hmm. for someone, if you truly love being creative and being a part of the creative process, like the moments where you're by yourself, the, the grind, like all those other parts that like aren't in the limelight or, you know, mm -hmm. you're not getting recognition for, it's part of the process. And I think if you really love the creative process and you will love that part because that's like where it comes from where it's yeah. birthed where it's you know where it's nurtured and well and i think grows. that part of the stigma about being too marketable or selling out or things like that i think that it's born from you know a long time of people just kind of like throwing stuff out and not having that like like deep solitude like mm -hmm. grinding it out um, I think that that is what it's more a reflective reflection of, of people just like not wanting people who are just in it for the flash mm. that, um, you know, a real artist is somebody who, you know, there's so much that like has to go in to be able to have like an output of like real like art yeah. coming out of you. And that's the craziest part, I think. Um like just that struggle you know like you said i i totally enjoy it i'm like yeah. okay cool i don't know if it's just how like because uh, i think my, par my parents are really hard workers so i just always grew up seeing them work all the time so i guess i got my work ethic from them and i just kind of implement it <clears throat> into what i'm doing now I, I really i just wake up and i think about it i'm like okay what am i going to yeah. do now for for the name of this the solid what am i going to do i need to go contact these people or create something new and it's weird <clears throat> Because I'm putting together this show. It's called Her. So it's based off uh, um, kind of figurative, a fe like a female figurative uh, silhouette. Yeah. And everybody that's part of the show, I just kind of gave them like colors, colors and an idea. So it's just kind of expressing their kind of mental illness, uh, you know, whatever they can kind of put together into this idea that I gave them and I I've yet to kind of make a piece for myself. Yeah. I think I'm just like painting for the show. Yeah. And I mean, it's cool. I, what, what I'm coming out with, I'm like, I kind of like this. <laughs> yeah. I made it. I kind of like it. It's cool. <laughs> and, but I've yet to make a piece for myself and I'm like, hmm, that's pretty interesting. Like, I wonder why I haven't took the time to really sit down because I I've, don't really have any formal training or anything. I just kind of do it. And I think, you know, like that's, I was so afraid to do it too. I was like, I can't just cannonball, <laughs> you <Yeah>. know. <laughs> but I just had it. You just have to do it sometimes. Just yeah. going in the deep end, yeah. and it came out pretty cool. Like, uh, I mean, as a as a creative, you're always going to be insecure of your own kind of uh, creative, you know, expressions and stuff. But people really have been kind of gravitating to it and complimenting it. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. That's cool. You know, it's hanging at John Michaels right now. Yeah. Those are cool folks over there. So it's like, I, I'm definitely designing like for each show and that's the coolest thing uh, just just designing a show like working you know for that toil gallery at mind and mill i've i've seen a bunch of shows kind of going through and i'm getting a sense of like oh yeah you can you can you can get really weird with it <laughs> you know yeah like really weird with it and i'm just like super into that and kind of i know like my favorite guys to take uh inspiration from is uh virgo i think that's his name he's like the designer for like louis vuitton yeah he worked with like kanye and stuff like, that's like cool. yeah he, he he does some pretty cool stuff um the way he talks about like designing and kind of creating your own like uh your own language and and designing and uh, it's just really cool there's like so many levels to it and i'm just like kind of scratching <laughs> at the beginning yes. you know? i'm like oh, yeah so i'm just like ready to take everything on 
but also it's like it's moving at a at a like a, a snail's pace and and I'm okay with it because then I don't have to kind of like not be ready for an opportunity or something like that. I can like really like just take the ride and be like, okay, cool. Let's start to develop a new kind of flow for this opportunity and stuff like that. So I'm like, I, I like the pace it's going right now. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've been working at it for a little while and I'm kind of, I'm like, all right, this needs to kind of go, <laughs> go. Already. But it goes back to kind of just trusting the process. And like, yeah. you know, so. Well, for that's you- such an interesting push pull of like, at taking things in, taking inspiration in and like using it. And there's an element of like kind of going through a phase where you're copying it. Like yeah. that, that like you have to really like almost like marinate in that mm-hmm. and like let it seep in. And then like you, it's almost like you like take it all in and then the new thing comes out of you and you have no yeah. control over Mm-mm. when that's going to happen. You know, like I've had, periods of time where I'm like okay I'm ready to have a little shift in my style or um like like doing better with this specific the way that I'm using light or this technical thing and so I'm just like taking information in and I'm like okay I'm ready (laughs) but I'm just not there and then when I kind of like just let it go and I'm like okay whatever and then I'm like oh it happened I didn't even you know like it's such an interesting process that even as the person creating you don't really have control you don't right you, I mean, you can try like i, I tried i kind of tell myself i, have, I got full control <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm in charge <laughs> i got full control but no man it's yeah. just uh you're just taking a wave and it's it's pretty yeah. interesting uh, i really enjoy just diving deep in those ideas like why don't i have any control over this like yeah hmm. but that's just life i guess right you don't really have any control right you can try the, the most you can but maybe then you don't maybe the quality of your life won't be as uh maybe spontaneous or something because if you always have control and that's one of the, the big things too i i, I can kind of sit i can go get a job behind a desk you know make pretty okay money and stuff but i don't see the like the quality of life i, I really want to have a really solid and good quality of life yeah. wake up go express myself and it might be a little harder of a journey to kind of to pursue but like i like i said the, the fruits of that labor going to be so good i think that yeah. that's what really keeps me going you know you really can't put a price on fulfillment you know mm-hmm. and like i've done a lot of different things in my life and there's times where i've had made a lot more money but wasn't necessarily fulfilled in what i was doing and then being in a position where like okay the income side isn't maybe where i would want it to be but i'm just so fulfilled in what i'm doing yeah. and i feel like i'm able to be creative, express myself. I feel like I'm, I'm making a difference or I'm helping people. Like mm-hmm. you just can't put a price on it. And I think so many people don't realize that until they're much later down the road, you yeah. know, it's like much further down the road in my life. And, and then, and then it's so much harder. Like you're, you're in a really great place with the age you are and, and having, you know, that realization to set a foundation in your life to, mm-hmm. to continue down that road of, being fulfilled in what I do and genuinely helping other people. Cause I, I really believe if you're the type of person where you're doing the right thing to buy other people, like you're gonna have ups and downs like everybody else. But I, I think th- your, your life is gonna, you know, at, at the end of the day, that piece that you get, the fulfillment you got is gonna smooth over a lot of the other difficulties. Yeah. But for you, um, did you, cause you play music, you're a musician as well. Yeah. yeah? So was music first before you got into art or? Definitely. Yeah. Uh, uh, my dad always had like kind of instruments lying around. Yeah. I think the first thing I kind of was hitting was the drums. <laughs> I just go into the garage and just like mess with the drums. They're a good entry point. Yeah. They're really good. It's just <laughs> the, the biggest kind of, I mean, as a little kid, I was just like, yeah, yeah. expression. You like know? I'm making music. <laughs> yeah. Who doesn't love just banging on it? Yeah, exactly. Right? And, and it just, from then it was just, that drum set or a drum set was always around, so kind of got in that. And then my dad would really kind of kind of push me to kind of play the drums. I th- I th- I'm assuming because we talk nowadays, and he's like, you know, you gotta, you just play the drums, man. You just play drums, like <laughs> start playing the drums more. And I'm like, okay, yeah, for sure. But I'm like, I don't want to be a drummer. <laughs> but at the same time, it's like that's the the heart and soul of you know all kind of music, the drum, the beat, right? Mm-hmm. And, yeah. And I'm now kind of seeing how it really matters in music right some of my like favorite artists like uh kevin parker from tim and paul he just uh they released a new album and he really talked about like um 
that he really wanted to use the drums in this album. So I was mm-hmm. like, I really dig this guy, and I'm going to listen to him. Cause yeah. So I sat down and with a different kind of perspective on the album, just like looked at it at the drum side, and I was like, wow, these drums are cool. These are cool drums. So I mean, I produce some music myself too, so I, I was just kind of getting into the drum beats and making better drum beats and better drum beats. So, um, But yeah, and so it kind of went from the drums and then, uh, I mean, I was talking to my mom and she'd always say like, hey, you're always doing something like kind of painting. I'd always make her drawings and stuff. But um, it kind of started with, with music, like kind of then veered off into that. And then I remember, uh, it was pretty funny. So my parents just gave me like allowance and stuff, like $2 or something. <laughs> and my dad had just finished painting like a just a piece or something. And I was like, hey, it's pretty cool. And I think my dad was like, you want to buy it? <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'll give you a dollar for it. <laughs> it was like the same dollar, so I gave it to him and I kept yeah. it. And we still have that piece, so it's, it's just kind of funny to oh, see. I like, love that. Yeah, it was really cool. I, I totally remember that day we were on the porch, and he's like, yeah, you want to buy it? <laughs> I was like, yeah, I got a dollar, man. He just gave him the dollar. Um, but it went from there, just like seeing everything, you know, really, really seeing everything. And I was always like uh, just kind of uh, obsessed with just like musicians, you know, and – how just how cool they were and it, a lot of people kind of call me like an old soul just because i listen to a lot of, like old music like on the way here i was listening to uh jane says you know jane's addiction mm-hmm. yeah that's, that's a great oh man i love that song yeah, and that love, whole album is yeah, great it's a good album it's a good yeah. album have you seen, uh, there's like a live version that mm-hmm. they do for uh i think guitar center i think mm-hmm. it's, that's a cool session I like yeah. i like those like live sessions yeah, yeah. they're really really awesome that's so like when I when you guys invited me in, I was like, yeah, dude, look at this cool collection of music, man. I was like, who would I want to be in here, you know? Um, but yeah, it kind of started from there. And now I'm just kind of painting and, and it's really, really cool. Like just sitting down and just expanding on the idea. Like I would have never thought I can do these things, right? And it kind of goes back to you're never going to know until you, until you do it. Right? Yeah. It, and like I'm not afraid of failure or anything. I'm not I'm not person to shy away from like adversity or nothing like that so i uh, now that i'm kind of more kind of been in this industry for a little while i'm like yeah just try it out and then you can measure it then you can be yeah. like all right cool what went wrong or why didn't this work out like this and then kind of play with that i think that anybody who's been a successful creative it has to start with not being afraid to suck yeah 100 like, percent. you're just like i'm gonna suck at this for a little while and even like you know, I've been a photographer for 20 years, and when I start a, something else, something different, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to suck at this for a little while, <laughs> yeah. and that's just how it's going to be. It's going to be terrible, and I'll get better. How do you th- how do you think, like, have you th- thought through this yourself? Because it's so true what she said that every, whether it's an athlete or an artist or a musician, like, had to do what they do now at some point and just really suck at it or be – best case scenario average or mediocre Mm -hmm. um you know and you said you you kind of you're not afraid to to fail Mm -hmm. where do you where do you think that came from do you think that came from like your your parents and the confidence they gave in you or something you were born with or how how do you think you were able to develop that i think it was uh through probably sports um i was always in sports yeah and it's it's kind of weird though because I, I've never really kind of sucked at anything. <laughs> I'm, it sounds so narcissistic. But no, Mark is the same way. And I think it kind of makes it difficult for you to sometimes like master something because you're just naturally great at yeah. pretty much everything that you try. And so sometimes you lack the like determination to Take all the time the that's level. my biggest struggle yeah. Yeah. i was trying to <laughs> not like you know, no i'll, trying to be I'll generous own it, it. No, <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm own it. <laughs> i'll own it yeah what what is it jack of all trades master of yeah that's me yeah, yeah it's exactly sure. what it is and it's just so weird i'm like whoa this is pretty interesting like um and i think have i think it has to do with sports so like to not be afraid of failure and you know i was part of like uh so i play like junior peewee football and we sucked. <laughs> you know, we suck. Like we lost every game. And but it was uh, like I, I wasn't a bad player or anything. You know, uh, I just I knew that I was like okay if I spend enough time developing this skill, I can just be good at it. So I just kind of did that, did that. But um, I think that's where it kind of came from. And it, it's really weird. 
kind of, when people kind of like I first kind of started uh, getting in this with like literature. I, I really liked like poetry and doing all that. So we had we had a reading at the Mind of Me. We had an event, like a poetry reading. And it was a pretty lively crowd. A lot of people came in. And I was like, oh, well, I'm just going to read what I what I said. And I just really just write things out. And then I condense it. And there's really, I just kind of put it out there. But what, the point I'm trying to make is after I was done reading, a lot of people came up to me. And this is the weirdest part. They were like, why are you so talented? And I was like, well, this is not talent. This is just me being you know, honest. And, and it's really weird because the, po- the poem that I read was kind of like... Uh, it was a little dark and things of that nature. And so people are coming up to you and saying, like, oh, it's, you're so talented. I'm like, no, this is just my real life. Like, I'm just <laughs> being real. This is, like, real. Was it – I listened to a few. Was it The Room? Was it that one? Yeah, it was, it was The Room. Yeah. I, I think the I, I read The Room, and then uh, there was another one called Her. So yeah, I think yeah. The Room – it was just – yeah, it was part of that that that, yeah. uh, that session there. And it was just so strange. I was like, whoa. But I get it, and uh, people kind of don't – really have those ideas out every on an everyday basis right and it's a beautiful thing to witness and hear it about it from somebody else yeah. put together like kind of artic you know artisty kind of way and uh i don't know if you guys are familiar with maurice you guys know maurice Mm-mm. maurice howard well he's mm-hmm. he's like a local artist in downtown like and he's been in there for a while okay and when i met him we had a conversation and he kind of put this idea of like when you consider yourself an artist, people kind of look at you like uh, kind of, I think he's like royalty or something like that. Cause it's a kind of a, there's like an artist, a craftsman, you know, chef or something in those realms. And it's like, it's, it's kind of strange a little bit, you know, if you consider yourself an artist and they're like, Oh wow, that's an artist. You know, he's, he expresses himself in this way, but what if he's, what if he's just really doing it? And, I kind of see where he's coming from. It, it was really interesting. That guy's just an interesting cat, man. He's just like, he's always, he's far out. Like, he's far yeah. out there. And I'm like, I just enjoy talking to him. It's just really cool. But he put that idea in, like, kind of saying, like, yeah, people kind of treat me like royalty now because I'm an artist and they see, like, my work and things of that nature. I'm like, yeah, I kind of I kind of see it. And he'd come around and people would, like, you know, the day of his show, I kind of would understand what he was saying. Like, I saw it and... I was like, that's pretty interesting, man. That's pretty interesting. And I think there's like, there's so much, I think the kind of art that people really identify with and appreciate or is when someone is just their own emotion or feelings or their, who they are on the inside, they're able to put that out in some form, Mm -hmm. you know, whether it's a song or a painting or drawing or whatever it is. Um, photography or their food i mean there's yeah. just so many different outlets but i think i think it's the times that people are able to just it it's not something they're trying to create outside of themselves if mm-hmm. that makes sense you know it's like i think i think especially if you have an artistic talent you can create something that's not that's outside of yourself it's not you really genuinely creating stuff yeah. but but when it comes out of like you said just reading that it's like that was just you know i, I think that's the truest form of, of yeah. art and being creative is when someone's able to do that but the i think the hard part is that you have to be super vulnerable to Mm -hmm. do that you know and especially art so many so often comes from a place of emotion and pain and 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 so to be that vulnerable is is difficult Uh, it seems like you have a just a natural ability and so your dad was a painter yeah he's like an amateur painter yeah Yeah, he paints some stuff and just randomly and he was like a weird dude though like he was like in his weird bands and stuff like so he, there was always like a, <clears throat> like a, there's always just kind of weirdness around. Like that yeah. makes any sense. Just eccentric. So. Yeah, sounds, eccentric. Yeah, so it was just really <laughs> crazy. It sounds like it gave you though the ability just I to think be so, yourself. Yeah. Definitely. Right. Uh, like, I think uh, it was. Oh, and I'm. I think it have maybe the biggest kind of battle of that is because I'm like an only child. So, but I have lots of cousins. Yeah. And those are like my. I kind of call them like my brothers and sisters and yeah. stuff. But. I think definitely I'd always be by myself in my mind kind of putting scenarios with my toys or something like that. So I was always playing with something, and I think that's what kind of kept me creative in that space. And yeah. then now that I've kind of matured a little more, I'm able to kind of say, okay, look, I can do this. There's a, there's a path, and now, you know, figure it out. Be that market, you know, kind of commercialize it. it. It's just so weird. Like, I don't want to be commercial, but if 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 it happens – 
then I can help a lot of people, you know? Yeah. Uh, Because the biggest thing I kind of always say is, like, we're all in the same direction. So if I kind of break out and go this way, there's, like, you know, five more or more, five more people in the show right now that are kind of going the same way that don't have maybe the, the opportunities that I've, I've gotten, you know, and I can help them out and kind of yeah. just keep that f- like kind of river flowing of just creatives through the people I know and stuff like that. Cause yeah. it, I think it's a, it's a cool thing and I see it like, uh, I see it becoming, uh, like a good life for like a lot of, uh, younger, younger kids, you know, just, because sitting behind a desk for you know nine to five, getting in a routine, it kind of lifestyle, and it puts kind a drag on you, yeah, yeah, big time, you yeah. know. And the, that's like the biggest thing I'm trying to show the younger generation that you don't have to do that. It's just going to be a harder struggle, right? You know, like in anything. But I think maybe they're they haven't seen it like done near their their like kind of circles of life. And it's just really cool to kind of be that person, like kind of leading a pack in a sense. And I'm like, oh, it's pretty cool. So It is really cool. Yeah. Well, and like you were saying before about the poem being kind of people coming up to you and being like, oh, that was kind of dark. I think yeah. that everybody has. I mean, we all experience pain. Mm-hmm. I think that that's where any type of darkness comes from. And so we all have that darkness in us. But it's not really socially acceptable Mm-mm. a lot of the time. And I think that that's where we get messed up emotionally and with mental health is that you're like, you know, feeling isolated and feeling like I'm the only person who feels this way and feels this darkness. So I think that the more that we can like normalize that and like get that's the beauty of what you're doing with, you know, kind of connecting mental health and creativity is that I think that healing a lot of the time comes from like let's normalize this, let's acknowledge that we all feel this way and that it's okay and that it's normal and it's not going to last forever. And sometimes you can create something and then like that's how you're like processing and letting it go. So I think that just like you said, like if you're able to like open that door and go out and five people follow you, that's amazing. Yeah, That's just like so great. I think it's a, I think a lot of people are afraid maybe uh, to kind of, keep people on board maybe uh yeah I, I, i'm i'm just like yeah man you want to come on this boat let's go <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know and well and it's okay it's okay if it's like a cool boat for you to be in for a period of yeah, time and then you, and then you go, see yeah. a different boat that's 100 like totally cool <laughs> yeah, it's exactly what i kind of instill in my mind just kind of like everybody come on let's just go do this you know because if i'm going to be doing something i'd want like a good solid route from it you know um that's why i kind of continue to raise awareness on mental health and anything like that just because I don't want to kind of be doing something and not have like a cause behind me or something good that comes from it right I can just kind of if if and if that's the case then I'm just being like a, a an artist just kind of being an artist right it's just right. like oh you're just an artist that's cool but like I want a cause like something that I can kind of like you were saying bring good to people you know like just not be doing something without like a cause or something like that. Yeah. So how does that flesh out? It's called the solitude. Yeah. How do, how does that work like with the group and members and? So um, I design the show, and then I pick uh, kind of like a handful of artists to jump on board based on like their style, and if they want to be a part of that show that that time, because uh, some people kind of they're like more abstract some people really really know how to paint a f- like you know there's different styles and things yeah. so kind of kind of curate the people for the show and uh pick a theme do that uh date but it was all just about a roll like the ball is rolling and kind of the halt of kind of covid in the world yeah. and it, it and it was cool though i think it was i was rushing everything the, kind of the universe was like no just take a step back <laughs> boom you know Slow down. yeah and I, I definitely get caught in that like I just get caught in just like don't go and just, just start doing things but and I forget to kind of take a step back and reflect on things and uh so and and then that time a few more people joined like I got um um like got some sculptures coming in like it's gonna be really cool nice. that's cool uh, yeah and i like, was gonna ask if it's like mixed media or yeah it's a mixed media that's what i love it's just like you know if there's a juggler there <laughs> <you know? laughs> yeah um but there's uh there's gonna be some sculptures um some ceramics 
and like planters, things like that. That's cool. like, I really want to design the room. Uh, like I'm thinking of doing like uh, this, like, I don't know why I've just been obsessed with like, kind of like, you know, like the old kind of ghost. It's just a sheet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I want to kind of make like a big sculpture of that and just kind of put it in the middle of the, like, cool. the thing. Yeah. And, just, yeah. and put my style on it or something. I don't know. I've just been obsessed with the ghost thing. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> but uh, it's yeah. kind of the ultimate blank cab came. Yeah. Right. That's what I was kind of thinking. Yeah. Like, it's just like, yeah. just the most like, that's a person or a ghost, but it's just a sheet. Like, yeah. you know, mess with the sheet or something yeah. like that. Um, but I really just want to experiment with everything. I want to be, I want to be able to allow that allow that kind of like experimental kind of uh, artistic thing with anybody that wants to be a part of it so and so yeah we, we get a group of people and we kind of shove them in a room and be like hey like these are the ideas and this is a the theme these are the colors kind of run with it and it, right now more people are kind of messaging me to like oh how can I be a part of it so I'm kind of like letting it build up yeah and maybe use them for the next show you know, so because I got I got like these, um, like five key people for this show, and I want to kind of keep putting people into the show, kind of like right for the next one, kind of putting them on cue and things like that. So yeah. I, I think it's really cool. And um, so, do you guys get together and like brainstorm? Or yeah, does so everybody, we, yeah, yeah, we brainstorm and have like a creative like art therapy sessions. Everybody That's just cool. comes in and just gets weird. <laughs> yeah, That's cool. and kind of also like kind of critique each other's work and things like that yeah um because we're all like uh, there's really no like hatred or like, there's no yeah it's just like oh this is cool man like how did you do that and then you just learn from each other yeah just because like i said i don't have any formal training in, in the arts but right. just life and you know i pick and choose things that i like you know f- just when it, if it comes to music or art or anything i just kind of pick and choose and i'm glad that i'm i'm able to have like a kind of a, a solid taste in in like art you know and it goes based on music and things like that like i've uh i've really kind of zoned in on the music that i kind of like and what's what sounds good to me and some things i just can't listen to you know like uh i've been um kind of obsessing over uh radiohead's um um in the what is it in the rainbows mm-hmm. that album is good yeah. it was a free right. album right they released it for mm-hmm. free or something like that so i've just been on, on that like repeating it repeating it it's such a good album and like the album cover like everything about the process right the the music the album cover the way it's composed yeah. everything like that so i just kind of been i get lost in like an an artist like that like tom york he's, he's a pretty wild genius guy so he's i just kind of brilliant yeah, yeah i just kind of pick and choose things that i like from from their aesthetic or what they've done and interviews like I, lo- I love watching interviews on just like musicians and artists just talk about yeah expressing themselves well, it's so interesting to hear somebody else's creative process mm-hmm. too. I exactly. think you can gain so much like even if it's something radically different mm-hmm. from the way that you work I think there's something so beneficial in yeah. listening to somebody else's process and that's what I, I kind of always tell myself like yeah we're all in the same direction like if if I, for some, you know, meet Tom York, I don't think he's going to be like, don't go this way, you know? <laughs> He'd be like, yeah, man, be creative as you can. <laughs> you do you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Like, I, if anybody comes to me with like, oh, how, hey, how do you do this, man? Like, I'm for sure going to tell them and maybe like, oh, and I, I feel like I could do this, but I don't know, I haven't reached that level yet or something like yeah. that. But but it, it's it's pretty cool. And, and I'm kind of glad where it's all going with this and like my life and things you know there's every, there's still some dark things in you know everybody's life yeah, and stuff everybody's but, got darkness um but this is definitely giving giving me like a purpose in in, in life i guess you know, con- pursuing this and helping you know the younger generation and it's just so, it's really cool it's it's a little surreal especially like uh when because i've been in like press enterprise before but like for sports and things but then when i got in the paper this time because of the art and I was like oh that's weird but it goes back <laughs> to like saying like I'm like oh, I, don't, I don't even know I was this good or something right like I'm yeah. just a jack of all trades or something yeah I think it has to do with maybe like I'm just a very dedicated ambitious person so if I put my time into something I kind of see it as like I'm investing my time into this so I'm not gonna mess around with kind of just being like uh, mediocre or half ass with it you know I'm gonna go with it and really put 110% Well, and I think that that kind of ties back what you were saying about the vulnerability. I think that if you're willing to be vulnerable in that way and 
people like definitely have, you know, we're able to perceive authenticity mm -hmm. in that way. And I think that, yeah, that's such a huge part of the process is just yeah. being willing to be vulnerable. Definitely. Yeah. I think being vulnerable and authentic is, is probably like the most attractive thing out there where, mm -hmm. cause I think most people, all of us struggle, but I think, most people really struggle with being vulnerable and being honest and just allowing what's in here and underneath the surface, like to allow that to come out. There's just so much of it is taboo. And mm -hmm. there's, especially with social media, there's such a pressure to, to be somebody I'm not. Yeah. So when I, I think the attention that you've gotten in obviously from your, your talent and the art itself, but I think there's another layer of just being real and vulnerable that, mm -hmm. that, that, people are, are just naturally attracted to because that's that's I think ultimately who everybody wants to be is yeah. to be yourself because that's like you know when you go home and, and you sit on the couch and you could just like oh, take a deep breath and like you know completely get rid of all of the my attempts to be this or be that yeah. like when you're in that moment of just, like that's the most comfortable you can be and so the closer that we can get to being that person in a group or around other people it's just, I, I think that's one of the goals yeah, of life. And so, and so people, I think, I think people are attracted to it. And it's awesome that you're in a place to help create a community because it, it sounds like, you know, like with us, we have six kids and they're all very different. And one, we you know we've made a lot of mistakes as parents for sure. But I think one of the things we've always tried to do is to give a safe place for each of them to mm. be who they are, right? And realizing that they're that's all going to awesome. be di very different. You know, one wants to build computers and, and one is a musician and wants to write music, you yeah. know. And it's so easy for us as parents to to just try to get all your kids to fit into one lane. Yeah. You know, it's like, well, this is who my kids are. And this so is who we are. if you live in this house, this is who you're going to be. But <sighs> if you're able to, you know, so but one thing we've in, in the midst of all the things we've done wrong and, and messed up, that's the one thing where we've tried to give them that safe place. Mm -hmm. Like, just be you. Like, that's who we want you to be. Yeah. Um, and I think when an, when an, an artist, someone on that creative side can find that um, and then put it in, in there to art, it just, it's a whole nother layer of beauty, even yeah. beyond just the immediate aesthetic of it on the surface, you know, because there's the immediate aesthetic, like, wow, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. But then when you like are able to feel the emotion and yeah. the pain and the realness behind it, that's the connection just, you make with it, right? Yeah. That's all, all the difference. Uh, but it's, it's awesome that you're, because community is so, so important mm -hmm. too, like, just having you know that sense of belonging and 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 uh so it's it's awesome what you're doing so outside of obviously covid like what what's the idea like with what you're doing putting mm -hmm. on shows what's the frequency that you were obviously going to get back to and how often are you wanting to put a show together honestly uh, i was thinking about that like the other day um because it kind of goes back to like uh um like i guess that's supply and demand, but really having like exclusivity or like, you know, like wanting like, mm -hmm. oh, that's a cool show. Because I put on a show, I put on like a, a visual art show. Like I had like a visual, you know, like a three visual like kind of shorts that we played. And that was like like two years ago. And I I was, I wanted to have one like every year, right? Every year, every year. And I kind of found myself thinking like, well, if I do it every year, am I really going to be able to develop like, to really expand on like an idea and a design? <clears throat> and so I started, you know, I, I put this show in the works and kind of doing that. But I think I'm just going to kind of go with it, go with the flow of things, you know, I, it's, it's yet to kind of steer me wrong, you know, yeah. the stride of life that I'm on or something. But Deadlines are such an interesting dynamic yeah. for an artist because there's an element where you kind of need some structure, but it can't be too much. It's mm -hmm. like yeah. a fine line. Well, it sounds like you you found a sweet spot because I think you have a natural ambition mm -hmm. and a natural work ethic. So I think if if you were to put like super strict guidelines, it would probably you know yeah. not give you the freedom to express mm -hmm. yourself. But it sounds like you have a pretty safe zone of. Yeah. You are ambitious. You have a work ethic, so you can be a little bit more loose on. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah, I, I definitely yeah, out. exactly. Like I definitely trust it. Like I tr I trust in in that the work that I'm putting out <clears throat> is really going to be quality work, right? <clears throat> um, so 
I'm now not trying to push it as, as much now. I'm just really kind of letting the process go. Yeah. And I trust in it really heavily now because it's got me to kind of where I'm at in the art community and, and things. So I'm like, just going to let it go. And I, my ambition is like one a year, but uh, we'll see where it goes. From. It's yeah. been like two years since I put it on the show, but it's because I've been putting so much time into it, you know, and yeah. it, it kind of like it really kind of kills me a little bit because I'm like, oh, people have been waiting. Like, yeah, because the first thing I like, that first show I had, I didn't expect like that many people to come out that I knew. I was just like well, kind of just jumping cannonball into the 10 foot pool, you know, didn't yeah. know how to swim. I'm just, I'm just going to do it. <laughs> See what happens. Yeah. yeah we'll and it, and it was a pretty good come out. Like uh, some people came out, people bought some of the prints that I had and things. So I was like, all right, cool. That gave me like a lot of fire. And I was like, well, kind of gave me some confidence too. And in, in my uh, kind of artistic journey and people were like kind of making connections that I didn't even know they were there like I was just kind of put things in they were like well this means this right and I was like yeah <laughs> sure, yeah, sure. <laughs> like, yeah for sure <laughs> like, so it was a really like beautiful thing that people can connect to it without even me like trying to steer them that way you know yeah and and it just kind of really helped me continue that uh, and sometimes I I forget about that time like I'm just always kind of focused on the future. The future. I, I always try to tell myself, like, live in the moment, man. Live in the moment. Live in the moment. Yeah. But it's, it's. I don't know why. For me, it's. I'm just always kind of. What's the next step? What's the next step? What's the next step? And, and that's where I find therapy and just sitting down, because I do like this kind of like pol- like, really, polymer style kind of, like, thing. So they're like, uh, I don't even know how to describe them, but it takes a long time. You sit down and kind of each individual like uh, drawing or sketches like not touching each other and there's like these huge kind of figurative like uh, paintings right so I sit down and really slow myself down like doing that and I'm like whoa so that's the time I can really sit down and kind of reflect and be like all right cool well, you've been thinking about the future for like three months now okay so live in the moment what can you do in this moment what can you change you know, like, is your is your mental state cool? Like, you know, I got to kind of worry by myself, for myself sometimes, you know, because I'm yeah. always kind of worried about everybody. And uh, and I'm and that's maybe like a, a bad, uh, it's not bad. I don't think it's bad, but if you're always worried about everybody else, you know, eventually it'll catch up to you and who's going to be worried for you, right? And yeah. Are you using paint or what are you, what are you using? Acrylic. I use a lot of acrylic, yeah. Acrylic, and it's so weird because this is, this is a funny story. So I, I was, like, having so many side jobs and things, and I was, like, and I was pretty broke at the time when I was, like, kind of coming up and, and things. And I was, like, well, man, I'm, like, I need canvas. Like, where am I going to get canvas from? And then uh, there was, like, a print, like, a roll of print they were going to throw away where I worked. And I was, like, you guys are going to throw that away? They're, like, yeah, do you want it? I was, like, yeah, I'll take it. It was, like, a industrial size like paper Big white roll yeah paper, white yeah, roll yeah. and i was like yeah i'll take it i'm like perfect dude like this is like the, the universe is giving me canvas right now <laughs> I'm like i'm like cool and I, I already had and it's it's a weird feeling because i had envisioned like how i wanted it to look i was like i kind of want these like long kind of like drapey things and it just showed up and i was like whoa this is weird <laughs> so then i just continued with that and and now like uh it's just the weirdest thing i guess i'm like making trash in a like you know <laughs> yeah. art or something so it was just it's a really funny story every time i think about it i'm like well i got this for kind of i got it out of the trash yeah i mean it was not it was still sealed but they just ordered the wrong one right right, right. and i was like yeah i'll take that that's fucking amazing and uh, i just i couldn't believe it i was like well yeah continue going something's telling you to go man yeah. <laughs> like, well and i think part of it is just like your like awareness as you're yeah. going through life and being open to like getting receiving things in a different way Mm -hmm. than you would normally receive them which is cool yeah so is that your main are you still using that type of that paper yeah Yeah. i ended up getting like two rolls like that yeah i was like oh cool so like it's working yeah so uh, i'm gonna start i'm just gonna utilize that you know i i I try to utilize everything i have you know I, i don't like to have anything go to waste or anything you know i'll even cut like the like if the paint's gone, I'll cut the thing open and make sure I use everything. <laughs> yeah, because that's uh, kind of uh, that's kind of who I am. I I don't yeah. like to waste anything, or, and so uh, I'm very uh, just try to utilize everything. And I'm I'm very aware too when it comes down to like the, my art stuff or that journey. I'm like, all right, somebody can use this. Like, I'm like I know this person likes uh, 
to sculpt or I'm like, I can use this if they want it or something. So yeah. kind of keep that kind of flow going yeah. with people. So, and, and it's cool because like you were saying, you're giving your kids a solid spot for them to kind of be vulnerable and be expressive. And that's what I feel like I'm doing it to these other people. And, and it's really, really cool. It's like, maybe they don't have a place to be expressive and vulnerable. Cause I knew for a long time, it was really hard for me uh, just to be kind of vulnerable and things like that. But I just had to do it and yeah. you know, it's the best way. And I, I, I try to tell that to everybody. I'm like, just go publicly ask for judgment because you're going to be judged regardless. Right. Of anything. But, so just put yourself there and understand there's going to be judgment to come from it anyways. And now you're prepared that there's going to be judgment. Like I went to like an open mic before anything. I was just like, you know, what? I'm just gonna read some poetry here. Like, Just do it. And I did it. And I was super nervous, man. I was shaking. <laughs> I just like, I was like, oh, God, this is weird. <laughs> and uh, so I just did it. And then luckily that crowd was such a nice crowd. And they were all like, you know, open arms. And like, yeah, this is cool. Like applauded for me. Like it's for everybody. And that really kind of gave me that idea to just like, just go do it. Even if like people like boo you or something, right? right. You get your, you're ready for that judgment because you're telling yourself, oh, I'm going to go and speak in front of a crowd because I want to, and I want to experience that kind of judgment, you know? So it's like, I, I try to tell that to the people that are coming up with me. So just like, just go do it. Like, don't be afraid. Like uh, my cousin, he's he's uh, he's a, um, he wants to kind of be in the creative kind of world. He's just a little kind of a, maybe afraid to be vulnerable in front of people and things. Cause it, it is, it's the biggest thing. Uh, like. It's maybe I don't know. You, you're afraid of that judgment. Like you're yeah. you're weak. You you have feelings. Like yeah, of course everybody has feelings. But <laughs> some people are, don't want to put it yeah. in the public eye. But I'm like I I don't really care. I'll just do it. You know. Like yeah. I have more. Uh, like there's there's not something that bad that somebody can tell me of, that I've already told. Them. I could, I've told right. myself like, countless bad stuff in my mind. You know like you're you suck or this and that like I'll, I'll tell myself that just to kind of push myself like come on you can do better like what is this like yeah so there's really nothing that somebody can tell me to really bring me down so it's like it's think, it's a pretty cool thing i think confidence is so liberating mm -hmm. i think that when you get to that place where you're like i know who i am and what my strengths and weaknesses are and so i don't really care mm -hmm. what other people who don't know me as well as i know me think yeah. Um, I think that when you're able to cross that threshold and especially like open yourself up yeah. to critique and criticism, there's that's where like the real growth 100%. comes from. Because you're like, I'm not changing mm -hmm. the core of who I am, but I'm open to growing and, you know, like yeah. taking feedback in. I think that's so, so liberating. Definitely. Yeah, there's so much power in that. It's like because we all we're all fake at times right mm -hmm. like no matter how hard we try we have times where we wear a mask it's like if i'm if i'm being a manufactured version of myself and someone judges that then i can be like well that's not really me you know it's like yeah. that just hit me to the core but if i come out and i like read a poem in public and i'm just completely vulnerable from myself and someone judges that that's like oh my gosh you're like judging yeah. who i am to my core which is i think probably one of the reasons it's hard for all of us mm -hmm. you know to do that so with your with your art with what you're doing now so you grew up playing the drums mm -hmm. music your dad was a painter yeah music was all around and you said your mom told you you would draw and do stuff yeah know, i was drawing it's funny too um just because i'd always like uh, i think i just like my mom's style i'd always wear clothes it was weird yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i was awesome. like uh, yeah it was really you're like weird. my mom's cool <laughs> yeah i just always wear clothes like she'd always kind of get mad and she'd yeah. be like, that's my jacket or something. <laughs> I don't know. I just liked it, you know? And me, I didn't even look at it like, uh, like, why are you wearing girl clothes? Like, I just thought it was cool and I'd wear it, you know? Yeah. It Did cool. your parents grow up in L.A. or? Uh, yeah, like L.A. County. Yeah. Yeah, so they, they lived over there. I mean, we were, we used to move everywhere. Like, we didn't ever stay kind of at one spot for too long. Yeah. Um. So maybe that was maybe like a big part of why I, I like to kind of just always be doing something, you know? I always kind of bring everything back to like the nurture stage of like as a, of an individual. You learn a lot from from that time in your life. So yeah, we're always moving around, meeting new people, and and I think half, I'm kind of glad that that happened. You know, just because 
I'd, I'd always make like temporary friends and like schools or whatever. I'm like, oh, well, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna move like in like a few weeks. So, <laughs> uh, like, uh, yeah, we'll have, we'll have fun. Like, let's have fun, you know? Yeah. I don't um, have anything to lose. Yeah. So, uh, and I kind of started thinking that, like, okay, cool. Like, um, I, because having friends is like, it's a lot of investing time. Like, if you really care for that person, and, yeah. like, you have to invest time into that friendship, right? And, it sounds kind of mean, but I'm like, I'm glad I don't have like that many like friends that like, it kind of goes back to like everybody's fake at times. And some people, they just uh, have fake friends and it's like yeah, the it's weirdest a lot thing to maintain <laughs> when you're maintaining fake people. Like, that's exhausting. I, and I don't know, understand why people do it. Like, yeah, a good buddy of mine. He, I, I, I can see he has like a bunch of like fake friends that are not looking out for him maybe he just wants to be in that scene or something but it's like dude you gotta you know be you just yeah you'll find the right people don't want to don't try to fit into a scene if you're not that shape of you know right and it's like man it's just i think a lot of people kind of get lost in that field and that's what i'm trying to have like just everybody fits in this scene you know and yeah i've never like i've never not I'm, i'm not afraid to talk to nobody you know i sometimes like there'll be like some you know people out in the street just look like they're far out there i'm like hey, you guys are good like you guys okay or yeah. what you know like <laughs> it's just a beautiful thing you, you can learn a lot from every anybody mm-hmm. yeah I, I always just try to be a student to to the world to yeah. anybody because i don't know everything and and the person across from you probably doesn't know everything either so it's like let's but they just, know different things exactly than you know exactly and yeah. that's the that's the beauty of, of like just meeting strangers and 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 things of that nature like for a while when i was in when i was living in riverside i still live in now but there was this dude um he i heard he passed away rest in peace but he was this interesting guy he's just uh you know i i was going through like an antique shop and i already had seen him like on the street gave him water blah blah blah. we talked a little bit but he was uh at that antique shop you know where it's at like uh yeah it's right across the street or right next to molina yeah right by molina yeah yeah Yeah. so i was in there yeah that's huge and i was walking through and he was just kind of dancing like in a section and i was walking through and he's like uh he's like oh i'm so sorry i'm so sorry i'm so sorry i was like well don't be sorry man don't tell me sorry he's like oh i just feel like uh every time i i can't express myself around people because they say it's not the right time to and i was like who 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 like who tells you it's the right time to express yourself yeah like you know he's just dancing he's like i, I like to dance because it gets rid of like all my pain in, in my body it just kind of you know he just maybe leaves yeah. that state and he's just expressing himself or whatever but i was like who like that really stuck to me that he told me that he's like people freak out and they don't like it's not the right time to express myself i'm like whoa that's weird man. <laughs> yeah like I don't know, but I mean, I get it. You can't, don't be dancing like <laughs> right. if, in the middle of like a dinner or something, but who cares, right? Like, why, why can't you do that? Because you're afraid of what people are going to think of you. Like if you mess up the, 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 the proper right. language of, right. of the table, you know, and I don't know. I just maybe, I, that really stuck to me and, and kind of saying that like, you can learn something from anybody. And I was just like, yeah, man, I can, you can express yourself anytime you want. You know, as long as you're not, you know, harming humanity or anything like that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, it's uh, so powerful because, like, what you're doing with the community, you know, that you're a part of and mm-hmm. help helping curate to, you know, involving different types of art, you know, whether it's sculptors mm-hmm. or, like, I think it's such a, a beautiful picture of where our society should be, yeah. you know, like to looking at j- just, just a little tiny picture, right, mm-hmm. of our society and what you're doing to where – just being accepting like and and finding how these things fit together whether it's like you know a sculptor and a, and a painter mm-hmm. and someone doing something digitally like the fact that when you bring all these things together and make a show like you do it makes something really you know something beautiful and something Definitely. something impactful that it's just i think our society could learn a lot from the art world and mm-hmm. from what you're doing it's being accepting and realizing how much more beauty there is when yeah. these things that are very different come together and, and, and work together mm-hmm. um, for sure. So with when you looked at your um, the art that you're doing now, when did that kind of start? Obviously, it was probably an evolution since you were a kid. But mm-hmm. if you looked at like the specific pieces you're doing now, what was kind of the beginning and how did that happen? Um, the beginning of these, I, I've I'm, I've only started to grow my like uh, 
my collection of or yeah my pieces I, I've only recently started to make them um, but <clears throat> I've, I've always been like a into like a, like runway modeling type of designs and things of that nature you know like high fashion stuff yeah, yeah. Um, but that's that's what kind of gave me inspiration for this and the show's called her I mean there's more meaning to it but I just wanted to have like uh, that, that's what I, I kind of create things in the name of the show so I've yet to create something for myself I'm like I'm, I'm creating for the that the show and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing in, in somebody's eyes but I'm just making it for that show and I, and I'm, I enjoy it you know it's like a cool thing so and that's where it kind of I developed that that style and idea of uh, of what I'm doing currently yeah yeah so and that show her that already happened or what no, was it's the story coming that? up that's it's coming, coming up. up so we're, I'm trying to work out a date okay um, just because of what happened and um, there's a um, right now at, at, at the Mind and Mill, we have Steve is, Stephen Thomas Higgins hanging, and mm-hmm. his show, unfortunately, like we hung it, we had a great opening, and then this happened. And then it happened. Yeah. yeah, then it happened. <laughs> so, here yeah. we are. <laughs> so we're, we're trying to plan like a second reopening, just because nobody was able to kind of come in and really appreciate that guy's work. It's yeah. a pretty prolific dude. I, yeah. I learned a lot from him just, just watching him do what he so do what he does, you know. And so we're trying to do that, and then maybe another show lined up. But I kind of wanna, I wanna have everybody ready, you know. And it's pretty funny because when you deal with like artists and you're trying to get art from them, <laughs> like they don't, they won't be there. Like so, I told them they don't like, speak deadline. Yeah, they don't speak deadline. So I had to tell them like, yeah, we're gonna have this show on this date. Yeah. yeah. And they're like, I'm like, just be ready. Yeah. And they're like, okay. So. They're all like the day that that day comes or is getting near it. And they're like, oh, we're going to have a show and stuff like people are coming late and stuff like that, like giving me their pieces late and things. So it was a cool thing to kind of collect. I have like a pretty solid uh, majority of the show finished, like from their pieces. So now I'm just kind of filling in a lot of stuff with myself. And yeah. that's cool. And now we got this sculpture, this sculptor. So now like just waiting on that too. So there's just a lot more cool things that are happening with it. So I'm really happy where it's going. Like I, maybe it would have been kind of boring of a show if I would have rushed it like I was planning to do it. But now it's really kind of developing into like a big event kind of cool thing. Yeah. So. Do you know where it's going to be? I think I want to start it off at Toll Gallery at yeah. Mine and Mill. And then yeah. uh, I got some people out in Palm Springs that I've been talking to so maybe kind of move the show over to there and just kind of I kind of want to just kind of car- caravan it you know <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. So, yeah, yeah I have some things eyeballs on it yeah you have to you know and, you, and it's a cool thing too because maybe they could get noticed you know and that's just like for me cause that's what the whole thing I, I want to have this thing solid to just to be a vessel like doesn't belong to me it belongs to us right so everybody can do it like be a part of it and be like yeah i'm a part of that that's mine too like i put my things in there and it's we've created it you know i just put the name on it i've you know kind of been pushing it and things but it's not mine it's it's like ours you know yeah man hold 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 on to that because it's like that's one of the things that can just kill creativity and kill community Mm -hmm. more than anything when you have whether it's one person or a group of people that either start something or a part of something like that that starts and then they seeps into their pride and arrogance yeah. and like I did this and it just it just destroys it so it's so yeah. great to hear that like your attitude is just you know right where it needs to be mm-hmm. like because you how like we were talking about earlier at the beginning like you can't really control art you know mm-hmm. like whether you're a musician like you know I've I've written songs in the past and <clears throat> there's times where I'm like I want to write a song tonight yeah <clears throat> And it's probably not going to happen, even if I <laughs> yeah. if I come to it with that attitude. It's it's probably not going to happen. But it's that's the beauty of art is that it it's it's a living mm-hmm. it's a living thing. You know, whether it's, it's a, a song or a painting, and it it, it goes beyond the yeah. person that created it. Like you were talking about with some of your art, you know, like you had maybe an emotion and a thought mm-hmm. behind it, and then you put it out there, and it keeps living outside yeah. of you. Where you know other people hear that song or or look at it. And they get a whole different emotion, you know. It's just that's one thing I love about creativity and art is that it, it, you know, it's it's almost like you can be a vessel of something bigger, you know. Hundred percent. And and that's when it really truly impacts and helps other people. Mm-hmm. But with your community, what's 
what's the bigger what's the big vision like i'm, I'm sure it will evolve and you're still trying to figure it out but like yeah. where do you really want it to go i i definitely i see it uh developing into like a, not necessarily a brand but i i I want some sort of foundation eventually, like, uh, you know, to really donate to some big causes and, and foundations and things like that and charities. So that's the majority of, of what I want it to be. You know, uh, there's, um, you know, come from the show, there's there's all these fees, but there's a percentage that I'm going to take away to kind of donate to, you know, raising awareness on, you know, mental health and things of that nature. So I, I, I'm going to get together with, you know, some people that I've I've met and see what they think because I really trust these people and like what do they think it's the best kind of charity to really start to line up and really help you know right so eventually that I'd want that and I see it coming you know everybody's on board with it so um, that and, it, and it's just a variety of everything eventually I'm trying to, I'm developing this like running team because I love to run I like long distance running and. So we're developing that team mm -hmm. and designing clothes. And it, it all goes back to, you know, that vessel, that solitude thing. It, it, there's so much things we can put in that. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily have to, you know, like be just art. It can be, you know, exercise. Like I, I like to run. So, and, it, and I've been putting these ideas together based off, you know, my, I, my vision of what I want my quality of life to be. So I'm like, okay, I definitely need some exercise, you know, and can, you know, so I, I don't, I don't like to go to the gym. I'm not a gym guy, but I'll run. Yeah. <laughs> I'll run like eight miles and just go. And, and that's a cool thing in itself. And I know a lot of cool people like to run and just try to make it like a really cool just organism, you know. And But still, um, you know, raising awareness on, on subjects of like that. Just because I've been around it for so long and people have been affected by it that I know. And it's just like, oh, man, there's got to be more. Because it, it starts to become... Uh, like, well, yeah, you just have, uh, yeah, you have anxiety. Everybody has anxiety, but there's levels to it, you know. Like, somebody might have, like, crushing anxiety, and they just kind of blow it off just to be like, oh, well, yeah, here, take these uh, take these uh, antidepressants, and you should be good. But, you know, it doesn't work. It's not that easy, man. Right. <laughs> so, uh, well, and you're not really, like, dealing with yeah, the you're problem. Not. You're just you're kind of suppressing like, it. Just, yeah. yeah. And that's the, the craziest part to me. <clears throat> And, you know, I think for me, a big part of it was uh, I kind of really try to, you know, lose my ego and, and pride and things like that. You know, took some trips to like Joshua Tree and mess around with some like psychedelics and stuff and yep. research and all those things. Like, uh, and I think that's, a, that's a, maybe the next move to help, you know, treating depression and anxiety and addiction with all these things. I think, you know, some sort some form of like psychedelics and are you know proven it to help in that field so yeah there's um, some amazing research and stuff out there with that from ptsd yeah. and depression and, and people it, are are able to work through some like major traumatic experiences from their childhood like in an unbelievable short period of time yeah, yeah. So well, and it's really like moving forward where mm -hmm. I feel like so many of the medications that we give people, it's just like hitting pots mm -hmm. on a lot of things. Yeah, kind of plateau, not, you know. Yeah. I mean, not that, I mean, I know that it does a lot of good um, and there's people being helped by that. But I think that the more that we can take like a, like really like full circle approach to mm -hmm. mental health of, you know, that we are looking at exercise, you know, exercise is huge on your mental yeah. health, that you're bringing in exercise and what you're putting into your body and all of those things. I think the more that we can, you know, just kind of be looking at the whole picture, the better it is for everyone involved. Yeah. And it, it's a kind of a scary kind of a time right now, just because of what I'm seeing, like in social media, that everybody wants to be sad. Like I'm kind of seeing that, like, yeah that 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 niche and people just everybody wants to be sad but yeah. it's like dude you can't do that because some people are really sad you right know? right and it's like oh some man people are clinically sad yeah and it's like it's the weirdest thing to see yeah. it's like whoa what the heck like <laughs> you gotta be careful with that but that that's the you know yeah, multimedia we're in a weird time right now <laughs> weird time weird time especially with the you know all this is going on and things yeah but that's where i think art right now can really break out and and become a thing because everybody's been on everybody's kind of fed up just being indoors and 
they need organic like stimulation. That's why yeah. I think art can really come in and, mm-hmm. and give, you know, true organic stimulation. Like have your own thoughts. Think what about this? Like, oh, why is that like that? Why is that designed like this? You know, instead of just being on your phone and having it tell you why it's designed right. like that, you know? Yeah. Really kind of challenge your own mind and things. So I think it's it's a good time for art right now and any kind of expressive things. And I'm excited to see where, it, where it's going to go. from. Yeah, here, I'm know? excited to see what's going to be coming out in the art world over the mm-hmm. next year. Of as All these artists have, like, had all these deep, intense emotions yeah. and some time to really, like, process and sit with things. Definitely. You know, I, I was asking myself, or before the world changed, <laughs> I was asking myself, like, I was just asking, like, I really want to dwell in solitude right now. Like, I haven't had... Because I used to, like, take trips to the desert just by myself for, like, a week at a time, just being out there and just by myself. And not don't, like, y- you you start to not talk because <laughs> you're just by yourself. <laughs> right. And you say, all right, cool. What's the next move and this and that? And I was really, like, kind of wanting some solitude, and, and it boom, just all showed up. There you go. At my, you know, <laughs> front door. And I was like, whoa, this is crazy. Like, cool. <laughs> and it's weird because I was telling myself, yeah, I'm prepared. I'm prepared. I'm prepared. But I was really, I really wasn't prepared, you know. And. I wonder right now how many people are, are going through that, but worse, right? Like <clears throat> they were probably in a weird state already, and this hit right. them, and now it's like I, I could probably got like a data for it, but you know, there's some probably crazy data out there showing you know levels of people you know maybe committing suicide or something yeah. during these times. You know, it's just a weird thing, but that's why I think like art is a is a big savior right now for a lot of people, and mm-hmm. I'm just you know excited to continue that. Because that idea, and it's a beautiful thing because art is like, a, it's always, this is like a romantic idea that art is always kind of dying, you know, it's always dying, it's always dying, and right now I think it's like a rebirth, it's like, yeah. it died and now there's a big change. Isn't yeah, it's like a new. renaissance happening. Yeah, so I'm just super stoked on that, and being able to be where I'm at right now, and, you know, just expressing these ideas, and just, uh, I'm just super, super stoked, and it's just like, okay, cool, what's next? Like, I'm ready for the next big thing, you know? Yeah. yeah. So do you have, have you kind of thrown out some tentative dates for, obviously um, you have to wait and figure out what goes on with yeah, the world event? Yeah, I'm kind of, we're still kind of in the process of, like, you still kind of have to function around, uh, like, the social distancing guidelines and things like that. Because I yeah. know uh, Riverside has opened most of their bars and things like that. They're still practicing, like, so, but I don't yeah. think... Uh, <clears throat> maybe I just have to look into it more but there's definitely a date We're, we have a Steven show coming up first but we want to reopen that one again <clears throat> give him a chance give people a chance to come look at the yeah. art you know? yeah. do they have a date scheduled for him um, not quite yet I yeah. think there's it's still in the I know works. we're all in such like this weird yeah. in between like funk. are we open are we not open are we getting together are we not yeah, yeah. so how are you I'm sure it's happening happening organically, but with the solitude and the group and who you work with, mm-hmm. are you just like do you have your community and you know, that kind of goes in and out of other communities, or h- how are you kind of curating yeah. those that you're working with? Um, right now, it's a lot of word of mouth and who I kind of meet yeah. in, on on the way. Um, but there there is a, a like a, it kind of what really kind of put me on onto this path was. Uh, I used to be in like uh, Ruka, the, that brand Ruka. I was really into that brand, like just what they did and everything. You know, they had like all these different categories of like sur- the surfer Ruka team, skater mm-hmm. Ruka team. And I used to go to all their events in, in Costa Mesa. They had like a headquarters over there. They'd always put on events and art shows. So I always go to kind of put myself in that scene. I wanted to see how it all worked. And I met with this guy. Brophy, he's like a head of the surf team at Ruka, and it was random. Like I was just knocking on the door. I really wanted to show a video I had created, and I was like, oh, I could probably show it here. Like that's the level I had in my mind. Like there's no, what's the worst is he's gonna tell me no. Yeah. Like, yeah. So I walked in there one day, just like I was like, hey, uh, I was here like last week. I saw you guys put on a show. Like who can I talk about putting on a show? And he was like, one of the dudes was like, no, I don't, I, I don't hear anything of a show. I was like, yeah, you guys were playing a show like last week, surfer like movie. And then Brophy was like, like above, and he's like, wait, what, what do you need? And I was like, oh, I was here for the show. He's like, yeah. So we started talking ideas, and and he's like, who are you? And I was like, 
oh, I'm just a dude. Like, I was always just knocking on doors. Like, I respect that, man. I was like, yeah, yeah like, I want to know. You know, you got to go find these things out yourself, right? Yeah. And so he was like, yeah, I was trying to see, a sh- like, I want to put together a show. And he's like, oh, well, it's going to be kind of difficult here um, just because it's like, uh, it's it's more like kind of uh, within their team that put things on. And I was like, oh, he's like, but you can show me your video. And I was like, all right, cool. So I like, I pull out my laptop and I try to show it and then it died. And I was like, oh Aww. my goodness, man, this is so like weird. Technology like technology failing yeah, me. Like, I'm trying to show you this cool thing I created. And then it's like, oh man. <laughs> but, uh, and, but he was a cool dude. We exchanged like emails and sent him some like, um, like images and videos of it. He, he was pretty, he's pretty, uh, he kind of motivated me. He's like, yeah, man, continue to do it. Like I've, I haven't, I haven't met somebody in a while that knocks on doors and yeah. is is curious is th- at, at this level like of curiosity. You have like this level of curiosity, right? I'm like, yeah, thanks, man. Like it means a lot, and that kind of helped me push, kind of continue doing what I was doing. So I definitely want to try to reach out back to him and see what we can work with with that with that brand. But but I also it's just weird. I think the language that I I I show for you know solitude. I think it's it's a little too uh, it's too big or something because I try to reach out to uh, Pepsi as well, and because they run, they own Smart Water and I wanted to get my stuff on the Smart Water bottle, and so we we shared convers we shared like emails and I kind of give them like a proposal and things and they're like sorry we we don't work with uh, we can't work with other like companies. I was like, well, I'm not a company. Like, I'm just a dude. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm just, I'm like, well, am I speaking, like, too, like, like it's a thing already? Because it yeah. wasn't that much of a thing back then, like, the solitude wasn't, yeah. it was just in my mind. I'm like, yeah, I want to kind of do this. And that was an idea. And it always has always been like that. But now it's, it, it, I think I'm catching up with the, the the reality of it. It's like, okay, now it's, now yeah. I can really reach out to these things and have it. It, it. Because before it was, like, kind of like a fake it till you make kind of thing. Right. And uh, I, but I. There has to be another like phrase for that because I really thought like this is gonna be what I want it to be. Yeah. Yeah. And it's slowly kind of doing that. So I, yeah, I don't like until this... you make it is so negative for something right? yeah. that is actually like positive and necessary mm-hmm. in building a business. Definitely. So, so that's why I, I kind of was like, yeah, well, yeah, this is happening. Like and now <laughs> it's kind of a little surreal that it's actually happening and people yeah. are on board and and. Like right now, I, I feel like kind of overwhelmed because I haven't had a time to really talk about it and think about it. You know, because vocalizing it you you hear it for yourself and yeah process yeah it. the process of things so uh, it's just really cool like you know it's kind of happening slowly but like i said at a snail's pace but we're all taking it you know very optimistic because then i'll be ready for the next opportunity because we're going at a pretty smooth you know rate yeah so. yeah consistent so people that would like want to be involved in some way what with what you're doing artists or mm-hmm. what's the best way for them to um, they involved. could just reach out to me, um, um, my email, just, uh, Fernando, uh, at mindemail dot com, Um, and then my Instagram, people usually message me on Instagram. Yeah. It's, uh, so there, or just step, walk into the mind and just, you know, either talk to me or Luke and we connect everybody with everybody. So yeah, those are the best probably ways to do that. But thanks so much, man, for yeah, coming man. on. Yeah, we'll, uh, awesome. we'll thank you guys. We'll definitely obviously keep following you and stay connected and awesome. be at your show for sure when, when, when that happens. I'm excited to see so. the ghost. Sounds good. All right, man. Awesome. Appreciate it.